I'd like to thank uh, Lighthouse for inviting me, first of all, and you in particular. Um, I have uh, 20 minutes to give a 15, 50 minute talk. So uh, there's already a Virilio connection. We're going to be going at dromological speed. Um, I will uh, preface the talk, which is called Terraphone, with just a few uh, little remarks as to how it came about. I don't know why, but uh, the things that I have to write for the day after tomorrow, as opposed to the things that I have to write for next year, always seem to turn out to be the most popular talks. Every time I write something and think, wait while they see this, nobody reads it. Uh, and when somebody says, can you do this by tomorrow afternoon? It always seems to kind of work out okay. So I was asked to write something for the special issue of Journal of Visual Culture, uh, which was on uh, 50 years of McLuhan's uh, understanding media. And uh, we were only allowed uh, a thousand words each uh, to write anything we wanted, so um, I got my uh, well-thumbed copy of uh, Understanding Media and just started to read the, the chapter on the telephone and started to think about McLuhan. So the first part of the talk is just talking a bit about what McLuhan uh, thinks about the telephone. The second part of the talk is really then saying, well, where does that leave us now? Uh, the third part kind of crashes into Virilio and, uh, uh, and, and leaves us with, uh, well, certainly leaves me with some questions. Um, but I'll, uh, I'll go at fairly uh, quick speed. And my, uh, my talks are all, uh, 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 all images. So I, just, I will just literally make the points uh, rather than expand on them. So the paper and the, the talk is about this thing. What is it? Why is it? How is it? So I started to think about what is it that McLuhan had to tell us. And uh, I, like uh, a few of my friends, um, we're very much uh, uh, aficionados of, of McLuhan. For some reason, even today, on media studies courses, understanding media never features. So McLuhan is still a kind of... Uh, bad smell around, uh, about me, uh, around media uh, uh, courses very often, especially uh, uh, media studies courses, usually because of the uh, alleged sin of uh, technological determinism. I have to fess up. I am a technological determinist, and uh, I don't care who knows it, really. Um, so I I'm very uh, enamored by uh, 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 McLuhan, and I think there's uh, still a lot, a lot to work with. So, what does he say? Let's start with the chapter on the telephone in Understanding Media. What does McLuhan tell us? 50 years old, the book, uh, this year. Key thing, if you don't know McLuhan, is that he's interested in the form of media, not the content. Uh, the issue of the content will come back later in the, in the talk. But for now, for, for McLuhan, the key thing about the telephone is the form of the media, not the content. This is something that I've always liked about, uh, about, um, about McLuhan's material. In other words, it's, it's not about what's on the television screen. It's the fact that we all rearrange our furniture in the living room to face a machine in the corner. That's what's actually significant. So it's the form, not the content, that matters. And, the, and the, this, is true of the, this is true of the telephone. First point that McLuhan makes is this. Telephone is a form of shared participation. It's something we can all do together. Uh, second point is that the, that the telephone brings with it what he talks about as a form of social implosion. In other words, it actually brings with it all kinds of ramifications and implications that people had never actually thought about. And this is true of any t technology, anybody who kind of studies uh, technology or digital technology uh, of any kind, pretty much you see the same thing over and over again. And that is, there's the kind of utopian moment of discovery, you know, John Logie Baird saying, look, I can see you on this screen at the other side of the room in 1935. And somebody else saying, what use is that? Uh, you know, and it's like, well, maybe there might be some use somewhere. So you get this kind of, uh, you know, uh, uh, kind of utopian moment, and, that, and then it kind of feeds into all kinds of other uh, sorts of areas. 
First, you know, a major point that McLuhan makes is a telephone abolishes our sense, our sense of social space. In other words, social space doesn't necessarily matter anymore. This is certainly something that people are still concerned about when they're talking about digital technology. So if, uh, there's a lot of talk, at least in academia, about things like overcoming the friction of distance, for instance. So uh, that distance somehow is a problem. Uh, I don't think it necessarily is, but the first point that, that McLuhan makes. Telephone abolishes our sense of place. Second, as with all technologies, massive unforeseen consequences. In other words, things that come with the invention of a technology that nobody thought about. So in the chapter in, in Understanding Media, what McLuhan talks about is the idea of the call girl. In other words, the idea that somehow street prostitution could sh be shifted inside and it was possible now to speak to, some, to, 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 to a, a prostitute rather than engaging uh, on the street. In other words, nobody had thought of this. So you kind of get the invention of new kinds of identities. So the whole idea of somebody called the call girl. Third point McLuhan makes is this, that the telephone decentralizes operations. This is significant. One of the things that McLuhan talks about is that, uh, uh, that prior to the telephone, if you were working in some kind of hierarchy somewhere, like, for example, some big bureaucracy, the idea of going to the 15th floor and knocking on the CEO's door and saying, I'd like a chat with you, was, an, was a kind of idea that was unheard of. It just wasn't possible to do. But all of a sudden, McLuhan says, with the invention of the telephone, it's now possible to sit in your office and ring the CEO, and it's not such a big deal. It may be in some. So you get the kind of shift from a centralized system to a decentralized system. It also brings other kinds of things. I mean, who hasn't exp experienced this? That is, many, in these are McLuhan's words, many mental and social transformations. That is, who hasn't yelled down the phone at a call center at some stage? Uh, the, the, these kinds of, in other words, what, what we're talking about is how bodies and identities start to change in and around the form of this technology. So it's the form of the, of the telephone. In other words, we haven't talked about what anybody's actually saying on these machines yet. We're just talking about what they do to us and around us and how we change our bodies and how we change our thoughts. McLuhan is very clear to talk about what he took in, in, in the chapter about how when the, when the uh, telephone was first in, invented, you know, you get the bell telephone, etc. It was a form of shared participation in the small town. In other words, it's me ringing the post office, which is only a mile away anyway. So you get this kind of small network and small networks of participation. Gradually, you get through until the kind of, you know, through here we're in the kind of 1960s with something like Pillow Talk, uh, you know, with Doris Day, etc. And therefore, you know, people no longer start to talk to each other over the back fence, as McLuhan talks, to, talks about it, and they start to talk to each other on the telephone. So the telephone starts moving out into society and starts becoming a, 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 a much wider sense of participation. As with most technologies, as I was saying at the start, what you also find is that people don't really know what to do with them when they invent them. Very often, you know, what you've got to remember, I think, a, a lot of the time is that a lot of technologies are supply-led, not demand-led. And I simply mean by this, is, you know, if you think about something like television, nobody in the 1950s, you know, were petitioning Parliament saying we need a square box in the middle of every living room that shows pictures and, and has sound. Nobody was saying that. It's, it's supply-led. But you also find that the early days of most technology are usually around amusement. That is, it's something that you play around with. You, know, you see with the, this with the history of video games. The same is also true for, um, uh, uh, for the telephone. Now, once you start to look into this and you start to see how much of society is actually engrossed in or working with or around. In other words, you know, there are whole industries that are devoted to this kind of thing. In other words, how to speak on the telephone. So, for example, I don't know about you, but, you know, when I ring my mother, you know, she has her telephone voice. Good afternoon. Oh, it's you, John. Uh, and, you know, in other words, they have this, uh, they have this kind, uh, kind of way of, uh, of speaking. So this kind of fusion of technology, speech, language. What McLuhan doesn't pick up on too much 
is the kind of world that we're, we've started to move into. So, you know, this is a still from the lives of, uh, uh, of others. So that is, there are other ways to start to use the telephone. In other words, the, start, the telephone starts to become something other than an amusement machine and other than a social participation machine. And as you have was saying, you know, we're in a kind of post-Snowden environment now. So what I was started to think was, well, how does this actually change what McLuhan talked about from 1964 to 2014? So Snowden, as we all know, I don't need to go into Snowden, uncovers widespread surveillance in general, but also what interested me was the nature of the telephone surveillance that's, that's, that's significant. One of the things that we, we're, where we are now, I think, that McLuhan couldn't envisage is, as you was saying, you know, we're now kind of in a world of prism where we're talking about you know, these kinds of PowerPoint slides inside, uh, 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 in, inside the NSA. So if you're thinking about you know, what we're starting to talk about, again, is the form, not the content. One of the things that McLuhan, I think, didn't feature uh, enough was the content, but I'll come back to that in a minute. But we're still talking about the phone. We're still talking about how a phone call, an email, the cheapest path, not the, not the physically most direct. You know. And we're into this language of targeting, you know, target communications, et cetera. And how much of the world's telecommunications goes through the US as a system. Everybody knows that if you see a map of the internet, you know, it's, it's white hot over the US and, uh, 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 and kind of dark somewhere in, uh, in uh, uh, central uh, uh, eastern Congo. McLuhan's book is called Extensions of Man. Probably couldn't, you know, uh, get away with, uh, or with that now, because, I mean, somebody's already written an equivalent to uh, Herbert Marcuse's One Dimensional Man, because there's a book now called One Dimensional Woman. So, but the, the thing about McLuhan that I, I think has changed is that he was thinking about the telephone from here outwards. He wasn't thinking about outwards, inwards, because... This is what's changed, as far as I, as far as I, I, I can uh, uh, ascertain. So really, what we're kind of starting to think about is not the telephone as an extension of man, a subtitle of, of McLuhan's book, but actually the telephone as an extension of the state. So in that sense, then, what started to change is that we're now heading somewhere else. But McLuhan's points all still stand to me. That is, it's not so much the form of the old uh, the, uh, telephone matters, but the form of the new media telephone matters too. In other words, what kind of thing this is? What kind of, what kind of technology, what kind of uh, world is, are we entering now? Because we've moved from what McLuhan was talking about, which is that we f enter this shared participation as a matter of course, to a, to a situation where, in fact, we're involved in shared participation, but we don't actually know what the participation is, or with whom, or on what basis that participation takes place. So, in my, you know, what, what I'm kind of doing then is thinking about how you kind of, you know, how things have altered since, since McLuhan. So, in a sense, then, we're all involved in some kind of participation. The trouble is we don't know who it's with, and we don't know on, on what basis, and we certainly don't know on, on what... Uh, what, what, that, what the other person's motivation is. When I thought about this, you know, this, this kind of image, you know, really kind of sums up the paper. Uh, because I think that, you know, what the, I, I don't kind of come up with a conclusion in the paper, but really what I, what I, I think the actual conclusion of the paper is really a kind of question. And that is, and, and I think this is what struck me most of all when I did the kind of bit of research on it, was that we, that, at least for myself, it was I, I thought I knew what a telephone was, but actually I don't know what it is anymore. And I think, therefore, you know, I thought I knew what this technology did, I thought I knew what it was for and why I used it, and all of a sudden it's got a kind of gigantic question mark around it. And, I, and I'm just not... And, and therefore this is, you know, McLuhan's implosion, if you like. It's a sort of, what? what? It does what? And it can do... And, you know, in other words, these kinds of uh, ambiguities around this technology that weren't there, I think, to begin with. And we all know that, actually, it, the telephone is not only abolishing our sense of space, it's also abolishing our sense of privacy. 
Now, you know, there are some people, especially around, uh, you know, some of the kind of lists that I'm on, like uh, NetTime, and uh, who are kind of, well, it's privacy's over, get over it, you know, it's get used to it. Um, I'm either too old or too stubborn to kind of go along with that, uh, that idea. I still think, you know, there's some uh, sense in talking about privacy. And I still think there are some things that uh, should, should be kept that way. But we all know that it's not only the, sp the, the social space around us, and we, we've all, you know, walked into people who are walking into us when they're on their phone. So it's, the phone has certainly abolished space for them uh, because, they're because they're now right in your face while they're looking down at the pavement. So you've got the abolition of space on the one hand, but also abolition of privacy on the other. And of course today we get unforeseen consequences, not like the call girl, like McLuhan was talking about, but in Britain at least, the phone hacking scandal. That is, and the phone hacking scandal is still going. In other words, people are still uncovering how many, how many phones. Now, we know that most of that was celebrities, but you're hitting something pretty close to rock bottom when you're hacking a dead girl's phone. Uh, you know, this, this, you know and, and you're seeing these emails from people like Andy Coulson, who was, who was editor of the News of the World, um, saying, do his phone. You know, this, this kind of email, as it were. But, you know, it's had a kind of boomerang effect, you know, the kind of trials and investigations, etc., cetera, um, uh, uh, in and around uh, the, the UK. So, massive unforeseen consequences. The other thing that comes with it, of course, and this is, again, a McLuhan point updated, is that, yeah, the phone, the phone does decentralize operations, but it doesn't care which operations they are. And therefore, it's you know pretty common. You know, it's pretty common these days. Then, uh, and and I just use this example in the talk because this is the Madrid uh, train explosion, which was detonated by a mobile phone, and that was one of the first times that people used a mobile phone to detonate a, a terror act. So what I'm trying to say is that you know when you're thinking about the form, it has positive and negative connotations all the time. You're dealing with this kind of balance, if you like. So, yeah, it can, it can allow you to talk to the CEO or to your boss upstairs, but it can also allow you to, do, to destroy trains and kill hundreds of, uh, of people at the same time. So this kind of decentralization is something that, uh, you know, needs to be uh, talked about, I think. And we all know that there are positive things that a lot of us, certainly me, would be, uh, you know, in favor of, you know, Occupy Wall Street, can't be organized without decentralization, can't be organized without mobile phones. So in, in that sense, then, we're, you know, the phone brings uh, uh, mental, social transformations that weren't, simply weren't possible there. That is, you know, the police are on, you know, 45th Street, etc. Uh, th these kinds of uh, movements. So it's not all terror and doom and gloom. I think there are kind of uh, uh, um, positive uh, shifts in and around the, the, the telephone. <coughs> The other thing that's changed since McLuhan, of course, is that the phone is no longer local, it's not even national, it's global. We're in a global telephone network. That's what, that's what we all find ourselves in. And to some extent, we expect to find ourselves in. Um, so in that sense, shared participation is now, is now worldwide. But what's also happening is that you've got a party line which is no longer in the village or in the town, but is global. And it's a digital party, party line all of a sudden. And therefore, the, the uh, uh, surveillance can, uh, can kick in at a much higher level. Therefore, you kind of end up with sort of conclusions like this. And that is that, as we all know, you know uh, Snowden's uncovering, uh, uh, uncovering telephone surveillance through the NSA. Uh, and you know, uh, I, I like uh, Friedrich Kittler's um, uh, paper which is called NSA, No Such Agency. Um, and it, it's a nice uh, play on it. And, but what I'm trying to say is that actually the phone has shifted from being something that we use to be something that the state uses. And therefore it's now part and parcel of the kind of military industrial complex. So in a sense then you're kind of on the receiving end of something. You think you're sending something but you're actually on the, on, on the other, other, other end of it. So it's a kind of, uh, you know, a new type of kind of media machine I would say. And we all know we're being, uh, uh, we all know that we're being kind of uh, asked or encouraged or 
uh, 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 to do certain things, which, which at the same time is kind of gathering information, where, location, where, where are you, what are you doing, etc., etc. So, at the same time, we all know that companies like Verizon and, uh, and others in the U.S., under compulsion from the, from, from the U.S. state, uh, you know, were compelled and still are compelled on a regular basis to hand over all the telephone uh, uh, date, data to the uh, uh, NSA. Well, the kind of feature of this then is sort of, if you like, moving into the kind of Ernst Junger Glass B's kind of territory, and that is, you know, heading down towards surveillance at a sort of uh, insect kind of level. And pl places like DARPA are, are kind of well on with this. In fact, this is, this is quite, quite an old image. I'll finish, because I'm getting the five-minute signal here. I'll finish with a couple of things kicking about, um, uh, 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 about how to shift, the, shift these ideas. Um, as some people know, I work with uh, Paul Virilli a lot, and, um, and therefore I, I kind of use his uh, work and uh, uh, thoughts. What you're going to do, and I think this today, you know, especially in things like media studies, you know, for years it's kind of like who owns the media, etc. I mean, who doesn't know? But actually, what is downgraded a lot, which really, really needs to be brought, brought for, to the fore today, is control. Control is a political concept. Ownership is an economic concept. And I think control is central to everything now. And I think what's interesting about it is, in particular, this kind of, you know, anarchists have been going on about control for years and years and years, and nobody took any notice. Uh, and all of a sudden, control's back on the agenda as a really significant uh, 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 idea, I think. Because that's what the phone is now, a, form of, a kind of form of control. So if you kind of take a Virilian line, Basically, what you're talking about then, it's not only the extension of the state, but also the extension of conformity. You can use this machine as long as you, as long as you conform to certain kinds of patterns. And, and I think this, uh, this kind of notion of control now is, is, is in the air. I'm writing a piece at the minute which is, which is called atmospheric control, that it's kind of control that's just around us. Um, the problem that you've got, because the question that I kind of get with this talk very often is like, what you're suggesting is then is that we all throw our phones away. Is this, you know, well, people seriously are talking about this. You know, and they certainly talked about it around Occupy. Get off the, get off the internet and I'll meet you on the streets. Whether that's any kind of solution, I'm not so sure, but uh, it's certainly worth thinking about. Because this kind of relentless, you know, uh, is a kind of dictatorship I've got here. Of, the individualization of the telephone on the one hand and a kind of, this kind of compulsory kind of communication, which is now a kind of burden uh, 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 rather, uh, rather than a kind of uh, um, uh, form of enjoyment, I would say. So, you know, it's kind of you're stuck with between these two big things, like, what, throw your phone away? Is that your, is that your idea? Or are we, is this the only thing we can do? But I think, you know, there are all kinds of problems that are coming with it. So, for instance, when you start... When, you know, when, when McLuhan's talking about it as an extension of our central nervous system, you know, one of the things I would throw up today is that actually the phone is a threat to our central nervous system. And you don't need to, need to look too far, you know, to, to the kind of, you know, the number of stories there are of 14-year-old girls who are committing suicide, you know, because of cyberbullying at school. So now nobody wants to talk about any of this. Nobody wants to talk about the pathological you know, medicalized kind of uh, results of these kinds of technologies somehow put to one side. It's kind of outside of what we, uh, what we w want to do. But, you know, no, but, you know, everybody knows, you know, if you received an email like this, you know, it's a jolt to the nervous system. You know, it, nobody wants to, 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 to receive this. So, you know, I'm going against McLuhan in that sense. It's sort of, you know, it's not an extension of our nervous system, but actually an attack on it. We all know there's no point anymore trying to have a private conversation and there's no point anymore trying to avoid everybody else's semi-private conversation because they're going to tell you what they're having for tea, whether you like it or not. Um, and I think, therefore, then, you know, you can start to see this in, you know, coming out, can't you? It's kind of humorous in a way, 
That, but you can see this, you know, people on their phone at the supermarket checkout, this kind of, you know, and it's actually starting to cause social kind of conflict that, that, that in a way is to do with the form of the telephone, if you like. So I'll just finish with that by basically saying that, really, when I started out, I have got to write an article about the telephone by tomorrow afternoon. When I started out trying to figure out what I was going to say by then, um, by, the, by the time I'd figured out what I was going to say, I, I, I um, was completely kind of, you know, um, ambiguous. And I still am about what the telephone is. And I think that if there's a point to the talk, it's to raise the question of saying, are we sure actually what a telephone is any, anymore? And I think that's why we need to talk about it again. Thanks very much.